Welcome to the 31st ever podcast here for Justin Book Sports. On today's first ever show, I've caught up with the Athletic Union League hero Des Smith, the North East Football League hero Tommy Melia, and the Monaghan Cabin League hero Daniel Morgan, and found out what's going on in their respective leagues, latest results, scorers, uh, who, who won what, and finals that are uh, coming up as well. So I hope you enjoyed the first ever show. Our first guest on the show tonight is Daniel Morgan. Daniel is the Cavan Celtic Piro and also the Monaghan Cavan League Piro. Daniel, you're very welcome tonight um, to talk about the Monaghan Cavan League. Uh, how's it going so far as your first role in Pier- as a Piro of the league? Uh, not too bad. I think I'm slowly learning the ropes and coming to terms of what I have to do. Can't complain too much. Um, that's that's brilliant. I've been following your work on the Monaghan Cavan League. Anybody that's um, out there and wants wants to check out the Monaghan Cavan League Facebook page, Daniel has been updating them on on a lot of the stuff. He's very quick with the results and 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 not only putting up the results, he has every single goal scorer counted, which is a phenomenal job. I remember doing it myself in the North East Football League many years ago, and it's a tough job what you're doing. So well done so far. Uh, it's not a new thing for yourself, though. You've been you started off with Cavan Celtic, and that is your your local club. You're still involved with them. Yeah, so I've been with Cavan Celtic since the beginning back in 2006. I was on the very very first team they put out, um, and I've been kind of involved with them as the old classic for years, and just doing usual stuff, putting up all the scores, results, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, look, we'll start off with the Premier Division um, in, in the Cavan League. Uh, last week's results, uh, you had three games on. Uh, we'll talk about the fourth game, which was in Sherlock Park. Uh, Sporting BJD won, Clonus Town 2. Yeah, Sporting BJD, yeah, a nice, really nice three-goal thriller there in that game. Uh, Sporting BJD just losing out for a one-goal. Um, Clonus Town, you know, Lewis and uh, Simon Douglas get the two goals for Clonus Town. And probably, you, you know, more men as uh, getting the one goal for Sporting BGD. Uh, Clonus Town starting to go really well. They finished sitting. Uh, yeah, I see Clonus Town's two goals was uh, Lewis Bennett and Simon Douglas. Of course, a lot of people wouldn't realise that Simon Douglas, a uh, uh, brother of Jonathan, that played with Leeds United. Right, yeah. Very, very talented player. Uh, pops up regularly and he's uh, going, going charge as well. I've seen him a couple of times. So, doing, doing the business there for Clonus Town. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the second game that was in the Premier Division, which was uh, a Peace Link Clonus. Uh, Killy Lock beating Monaghan Town 3 1. Yeah, this is a big result for Killy Lock. Um, sitting toward both teams, sitting toward and forward the table. Um, Killy Lock getting one up on their neighbours. Uh, Really, really good game. Killed up. Really nice, strong footballing team. Um, got a really, really good win over Monaghan Town. Um, really happy with that result. So, up on Killed off. Uh, Kevin McNeil and Gary Myers. Uh, sorry, Kevin McNeil for one goal. Gary Myers getting the two for himself. And Jack Brogan with the, with the one goal for Monaghan Town. Really, yeah. really good game up there. And Jack Brogan was uh, the goal scorer for Monaghan Town. Uh... He was, yeah. Um. And then we have the last game in the Premier Division, which was uh, played in the Cavan Astro. Um, gets a lot of uh, game time up there in the Cavan Astro. Uh, played in them yourself. It's a very good pitch. Uh, Killy Mooney, um, zero against Cavan Town, the league leaders, nine. Um, they've, uh, Cavan Town have two phenomenal goal scorers playing up front for them. A debut duo, yeah. They're, they're, they're a serious bit of, a, bit of an effort up front. Paddy Sheridan and Callum Lynch. Uh, regularly scoring hat tricks or, or two in each game. I think a between the two of them, they scored, between all competitions, they've scored about 50 goals, goals between them, so that's just some return from well, only only halfway through the season. Um, yeah, Kilimuni kind of come up from the first division last year, uh, struggling a little bit to, to kind of come to terms with with the Premier Division, um, but, and Calvin Town, you know, a very, very experienced side, and uh, just did the business there against Kilimuni, Paddy Sheridan with his hat-trick, I'll finish getting four, uh, just to have a battle to see who can finish top scorer, and then Cormac Boyle with two as well, Followed by another young chap that that's getting a lot of lot of goals. I've seen him pop up regularly recently, and um, so yeah, so strong Cavan, Cavan outfit, and you know, they are a hard team to break down. And yeah. So, uh, 
tough, tough weekend for Kilmarney. Yeah, uh, well, look, when you're coming up against a, a strike force that has, you know, when you think about Packy Sheridan and Callum Lynch, um, Packy has 17 goals in the league and, and Callum Lynch is 16. And the next one after that, you know, you're talking six goals. So there's like 10 goals behind just the second place. They've two to three goals out of the 44 scored so far, which is, that's some that's some amount of goals. Like. Oh, there's a phenomenal amount of goals. You know, three quarters of Calvin Tarn's goals are coming from them, them pair. You know, it's not it's leagues, cups, culture cups. They're doing, they're doing the business in all three all competitions. So, you know, they are two lads that are tough to stop. And you know, Paddy Sheridan, Premier Division third last last year, and top scorer the year before. So, they are they are tough tough duo to stop. And any team in the league is going to have to work cut out trying to trying to stop the two boys. I'm I'm sure uh, it's probably a competitive training session between the two of them, looking to kick each other to maybe knock one of them off. I'd say getting late towards the end of the season, they might well, stop passing to each other just so they can get that odd goal. <laughs> oh, I tell you, yeah, I think they've just got their own little bit of a lead going on, so you can get the top score. It's a competition between themselves at this stage, I think. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. Yeah, um, obviously the top of t- the, at the way they're playing, the two of them would probably be in the running for like a like a t- player of the season uh, of the league. Um, is there any other players in the Premier Division that has caught your eye so far this season? Um, I have a couple. Uh, so it's Sporting BGD. They're, they're a guy that just scored this weekend, Bobby Eunice Minas. He's actually cropped up now in the last couple of weeks. He seems to be getting getting a couple of goals for Sporting BGD. Um. Again, you'll start up quickly from Clonus Town again. He's he had that ability to get, get goals as well. And, and again, putting the card from Monaghan, someone I someone regularly, regularly see in my every week that I'm putting up on top goal scorers. So we've got some, some great, great strikers in the league, definitely. Yeah, uh, just looking at it, the likes of Corey McArdle and and, and, and Shay Deeney and Shane Lockran, they're like that. Picking up a few goals themselves for for Monaghan Town and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Monaghan might not have, have two lads just scoring a many the amount of goals, but they've got three three lads that are just featuring regularly on on the on the top scores. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Cavan Town are at the moment they're six points running away at the top of Premier Division. Yeah, just they're six points ahead, and you know, defending champions. On this is an experienced squad they have, so they are going to be tough tough to catch. You know, but. I think looking behind, you have got three three good teams that are following them. Um, you know, in in Clonus Town, Monaghan, Town, Kerry, you know, all tr- all top four clubs have won won the Premier Division the last five six years. So each side has got their own own experienced players in there, and I, you know, Calvin Town, yeah, they're going to be the team to beat, and it's up to the chase and pack Clonus, Monaghan, and Kerry off to catch them up and, and try and try and take points off them. Yeah, you can actually see probably if 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 any more points get dropped soon, uh, you know, it'll definitely just be a fight for second place. But you know, I, I think it can happen. Yeah. It's a long season, you know. Games, you know, as you'd say, league titles aren't are won, you know, in the first half of the season, you know. No, they're not won yet. But Calvin Town, you know, they've kind of started off, you know, six wins or sorry, seven wins, and just just the one loss, you know, scoring forty four goals. So. You know, it's hard to compete with a team that's scoring regularly. Uh, you know, keeping you know only conceded six goals so far you know, compared to the next nearest to twelve. So you know, they're a strong outfit and they are the team to beat. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll move on to the fourth division, um, Daniel. Uh, you had two results there at the weekend from the fourth division: um, Ballyhay Celtic two, Hugh Hill Harps two, uh, played in Cavan Astro. Been regular in the MCL over the last couple of years. You know, Bally Hayes, um, really, really good side played against them this year as well. Really good, strong side. Really, really good at counter attacks. Um, and yeah, this was a really good competitive game for both sides. Clay Harps it had a bit of trouble. Like, it probably, they kind of struggled in the Premier Division last year, and so now in Fourth Division, a little bit more competitive this year. Managing just a good two-two game. You know, Bally Hayes in a moment here and score for Bally Hayes. And Ryan O'Reilly and Dean Han, well, the scores for Kiddil Harps. Dean Han, another guy that's showing up regularly on my scoring charts. He's got, I think, four goals to share, so he's, he's doing well. You've seen kind of every week, every second week, he's been scoring for Kiddil Harps. Yeah, uh, um, uh, of course, Kiddil Harps, I, I remember covering them a couple of years ago. They, 
they had a very strong side back then and, and they went on to win the Ulster Junior Cup uh, that was played in Monaghan um, great win for them that day I even went back and partied in the pub with them that, that night with uh, a great, great, great crowd back in the pub. It was actually a great night. Um, great to see them yeah, well, back and competing. I know they had stopped playing for a while at, at one stage, and they've got great facilities there in Sherlock Park. Yeah, great facilities up there, and great team. You know, won the Ulster Cup as you say back in fifteen, and you know, Premier League winners, or Premier Division winners back in twenty seventeen as well. So, I think, yeah, that is a bit of trouble. They uh, weren't the best, the strongest team last year, but you know. In the first division, I think you'll find that they'll be a bit more comfortable um, and, and they'll start to be a bit more. You know, it's a strong side and experienced side, you know, good, strong, solid. That down the centre with, with sharp young young lads out in the wing. Just, so it's a really good side um, and I think you know, doing well in the first, doing okay in the first division for now. Yeah, uh, and then the second result in that division was Cavan Town's reserves uh, beat Monaghan United 2 0, and that was also played in Cavan Ashup. Yeah, it's great to see Monaghan United back to senior football. It was the first, the first kind of appearance in, in senior football since 2012. Um, great to see them back um, in the league. And, you know, yeah, Calvin Town, just like the first team, the Rogers are our fourth few reckoned with as well. Um, like you see that they kind of had struggled. The first two games, you know, they've got a loss in the draw in the first two games, and now they've you know, won four in the hop, so they're starting to find momentum. You know, they again, they're defending champions of the first division as well, so they are starting to put down a marker. The teams are going to have to try and chase them down as well. Yeah, the uh, the, the top scorer didn't pick up a goal at the weekend. Uh, yeah, I see he's ahead. Key Mulligan is on seven ahead of, you know, second place Kevin McNally on four, and and two goal scorers popped up at the weekend for Kevin and Karen Brady and Daniel Graham. Yeah, Kieran Brady, you know, he transferred over from Kilmeny there for this year, um, and yeah, he's starting. He's got a couple of goals now as well. And Danny Graham, and that's the first time Danny Graham has popped up. Top scores, but I think we'll see him a couple more times before the season's out. Yeah, so nice, nice victory over there for having to. Yeah, um, it's very competitive div- division as I said you know you've Kevin Town leading the way as you said defending champions on 13 points but Ballyhay Celtic and Glasgow fill you know 10 points and 9 points respectively and Monaghan you know uh, uh, you know they're on 8 points so it's hard to play for really in that division it's it's really quite open at the moment isn't it? It is yeah, yeah I think you know Calvin Town have opened up a 3 point lead but you no know, 3 points can, can change very very quickly and I think you know Bally Hayes, nice strong team, winners of the first division cup last year, so they'll be out for more silverware. And yeah, definitely a strong. They've kind of improved on last year, and they are looking like a strong team. They're leading that chase in Park. Uh, Glasgow Villa, you know, they've got two games in hand as well as over over Calvin Town. So they're playing tonight against uh, Monaghan United. So the table might might change before the night's out. But yeah, I think Glasgow Villa can can be very can be up there at the end of the season. You know, three wins, one only with one loss. Um, with two games in hand, and uh, so another another strong side. Yeah. And Morning United now are just starting to find their feet in the first division. Um, you know they've only picked up two wins and two put up two draws and only the one loss. So they're a hard they're a hard team to beat. And um, so yeah, so it is very very competitive, and I think we'll, we'll we'll see a couple of changes as the season goes on. Yeah, well, Glasgow Villa do actually have two games in hand over Cavan Town and Ballyhouse, and if they do win both of them. They'd go two points clear at the top. So, yeah, as yeah, you say, it really is a, a strong competitive division this year. Um, you know, even if, if we dwell on the Monaghan Cavan um, Division One Cup, um, you know, you're into the semi final stage there at the moment, and uh, the semi final stage sees Cavan Town play uh, Glasgow Villa, and Kew Hill Harps are playing Monaghan United in the other one. How would you see both games going? I don't mean to put yeah. you on the spot, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I think two, two good times, you know, Glasgow, Calvin Town, um, should, be, should be a good game. Um, you know, Glasgow are a good good team, um, you know, only the one loss in is Calvin Town, so I think that'll be a, a competitive game, but I think Calvin Town, you know, just with that that extra experience and that the squad type, squad they're using that are competing against these first team players every week in training, that they, they will just edge us. And Kill Harps, Monaghan United, again, it's going to be a close game. I think, yeah, it's a tricky one to call. Um, Good Hill Harps and Rodea can, can, can be a, a force to be reckoned with, but I think Monaghan United will, will just edge it. And Monaghan United just kind of um, have just signed in the last few weeks. Uh, last season, Premier Division top scorer in um, 
David Adamczyk. So I think he, he's going to make a big difference to Man United going forward, and I think Man United will do just edge that. So I think we'll see another calm time Man United final. What I'm saying. Uh, and while we're speaking about both of them teams, uh, you know, well, just to ask um, quickly onto the Ulster FA uh, Junior Cup and Junior Shield ties that are due to be played this Sunday. Um, we'll talk about the Junior Cup just uh, really briefly. Is uh, Cavan Town, your Premier Division League leaders, head down for the last 16 toy away to Lifford Celtic. Uh, they're playing in Green Bray Park in uh, Lifford, and that's at 1:30 p.m. Uh, how would you see that match going for the, uh, your Premier Division leaders? Yeah, this is a Calvin Town. So Calvin Town last year got to the Ulster um, Ulster Cup semi-finals and just lost that one 0 to Glengad. Um, so I, these these guys are forced to reckon with an Ulster. You know, it's a good win over how many Shamrocks in the first round. Then a four-one again. Paddy Sheridan and, and Callum uh, Lynch getting the goals from. Um, so I think. I think that they have the ability to go on to go far in this competition, and I'm sure they're looking to get one step forward and go all the way to the final this year. Yeah, and in the Junior Shield, in the last 32, also uh, on Sunday, as we said, is um, Monaghan United heading down to Cull Daff um, um, Karatra Park. Uh, how do you see that one going for Monaghan United? Yeah, uh, so, yeah, Monaghan United, again, you know, it's nice to see them back back. Beating in the other competitions, and um, they had a really, really nice good win against the Manchester United 6 1. So, a really good start to their com- campaign. And, you know, Cold Apple going to be a tough, a tough out to beat like, any of these other teams, but they are really, really tough. Um, but so I think that they, they can go, go to the next round, I don't see why not. Um, you know, they're a good team on their day, and they're hard, hard to beat, as I said before. So, I think you know, they play their, play their game, they, they will they'll put up a good competition for Cold Apple. Yeah, that's uh, well, and hopefully they will do that. Um, it'd be great to see uh, a couple of um, Cavan sides and and uh, Cavan Monaghan League sides go all the way, uh, and and win these trophies because it puts you on the map completely. Uh, and exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll home in on um, the fixtures for this weekend. Uh, we'll start with the Premier Division week nine sees Clonus Town and Killy Lock being played in Peace Link, Clonus, uh, three p.m. How do you see that one going? Again, it's going to be another tight game. Killy lost, but they are a good outfit. And again, Clonus Town as well. Clonus Town kind of sitting second. Killy lost board, but you know, not not a lot to separate the two sides. Good player safe. Uh, they'll go for a safe draw on this one. Yep. But, yep. Uh, uh, and the second game, we see Spartan BJD playing Killamooney and Cavan Astro. Yeah, Killamooney kind of struggling a little bit of late. Um, and sports, I suppose, like these are the bottom two sides and in the division, Premier Division. Uh, but last time the match, Sporting BGD had did, did be killing me four 0 and I think they they have that in them just to put in another performance and get the win over Killamooney. So I'm gonna say Sporting BGD will will just win that win that one. Yeah, uh, and then we have two fixtures in in the fourth division, uh, as we both said. Um, obviously one is on tonight, so we'll get the result um, sent on to us. Um, later on is uh, Monaghan United uh, are playing Glasgow Villa uh, you can take a guess on that result unless you've got a text <laughs> not got a text yet no uh, oh, this is again this is a tight one uh, you know teams only separated by one point in the table so oh, what was that what was that I think Money United are just going to edge oh, I'm going to call it a draw I'm going to call it a draw I think they're going to you're going to fall off this fence at some stage <laughs> and and of course we go to the uh, one at the weekend as Hill Harps are playing Glasgow Phillip again on on um, Saturday at Sherlock Park yeah Glasgow twice this week um, two away yeah, games Glasgow, two away games but I think Glasgow have, will come out of, this, out of this with the three points from Cahill and you know they are on a good run and they are a good side and, and, I think they will be competing up at the top of the table, so I think they're going to give us three points to Glasgow. So you're predicting four points for Glasgow to fill it in the two matches that will put them level with Cavan Town come into the weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well called, well called. Um, just uh, lastly, we'll just kind of get to know your committee. I know uh, a lot of people would kind of wonder who's on the committee of the Monaghan Cavan League. Uh, who's a, who? Who would be the chairperson? That's a shame as two others doing chair chairperson for the Calvin Monaghan League and being assisted by Ronald Callan, the vice chairman position. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, your secretary slash treasurer. Yeah, so Tanya Brady's doing that role. She's been there, doing there for the last five years, I think. So, uh, doing a good job there. So. Yeah, yeah. Tanya Brady. I know we've had dealings where we played the over twenty fives. Um, very, very oh, yeah. prompt, very good. So, uh, and obviously, of course, this year first year your payroll. Uh, Mr. Daniel Morgan, Cavan Celtic, yeah. and, and doing a fantastic job, as I said. Um, it's great to see the work being carried out. Uh, your Red Schrar, Michael Oxy Walsh, he's been there a long time. Michael Oxy Walsh, yeah, he's, he's been, actually been around, around for a long time. Uh, I think he was there when I was playing on the raid, so he's been about a long time. Um, Cavan, Cavan Town man, and uh, man with lots of knowledge of football. Uh, so, yeah, he's doing a good job there, and he's been assisted by his, his, his uh, teammates, Damien Smith. Yeah, he's just the registrar, not another Cavan Town man. Yeah, and the final person is one O'Brien, assistant secretary. Yeah, so 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 a good strong seven on the committee, and and things are looking good for Monaghan Cavan League at the moment. Yeah, things are going well at the moment. Uh, just getting ready for a pair of the cup final, cup finals coming up soon, and yeah, it should be all right for Christmas. That's brilliant. Listen, um, Daniel, thanks for coming on tonight and talking. Uh, and once again, you're doing a fantastic job. Um, and if you ever need any help just or assistance, you know where I am to give me a buzz. And uh, best luck going forward. Thanks, Justin. Keep up the good work. Our second guest on tonight's show is Tommy Melia. Tommy, of course, is the Piero from the North East Football League. You're very welcome. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for having me. Um, you're nearly at the business end of the season now. We have your first year in summer soccer. Um, your league campaigns are near enough dusted off and you're moving on to the cup finals. How's the season gone for you, uh, your first year in summer soccer? Well, uh, I guess I summer so- soccer sparsely, to be honest. There wasn't much of a summer. But uh, I think it's um, it's gone all right. A few bumps along the way like you know a few uh, gremlins I say to be sorted out like you know but um, I'd say it's um, with the years experience behind us next year should be a lot should run a lot smoother I think yeah I, th- I think the, the, from talking to a lot of clubs a lot of clubs uh, said that you know the summer break whereas there was a festival of football on during the campaign etc that kind of took away from a lot of games being played some games hadn't played the week before that two week break came in and some teams said they didn't even play the week after so they literally had a month off in the, in the summer and it was very hard to motivate players to keep playing when they knew they had no games and other people were off on holidays when that after that month break etc so cutting out all these little teething problems going forward you know a lot of clubs are expressing that they just want to have a continuance rather than a break during the summer going forward next year that there's a continuance that will allow teams to keep playing yeah, like, I think it, like, it is a little bit of trial and error, but at the same time, if it was back in the normal season where you have your bit of a break over Christmas and stuff, I don't think there's anything too wrong with a break. I know with some players can be gone on holidays and some players can take off at festivals, but I know from the other end of it, like with, um, the likes of managers and coaches and that, they have to be there every week. They still have to set up um, training and uh, facilities and stuff like that for the people that are going to be there, you know. So I wouldn't say the two week break had a big overall. Um, I don't. I don't think it was too bad, like you know. But um, like it, the other end, like it, it is. It, it was a little bit of trial and error, and I'm sure like next year will run a lot, lot smoother. You know, they've a little bit more of an understanding of uh, calendar year of football. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. The Premier Division crown has changed this season. Um, I know Boyne Harps were defending champions and went out of their way to try and push for that two wins in a row. Um, they were pipped into second by Trim Celtic. Trim Celtic, under the management of Alan Murphy and Rob Dillon, came came and you know won the league at the time unbeaten. Yeah, yeah. Look, at the, the table level lies at the end of the year. Um, ourselves and Trim were, I think, at a stage there we, we were 10 games and Ten wins, and you know we went through a little bit of a blip of talking myself at point halves and stuff, you know. But um, like fair play to Trim and Alan, and um, they're like you know they they were just consistent, consistently winning games, and um, I think they probably deserved it in the end. Like you know, it's just well, not probably a bit. They did deserve it in the end. They, 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 as I said before, the table doesn't lie. Like you know, and they were probably the most consistent team all year. 
Yeah. Um, and congratulations to them. I think they, they, won it, they won it well. But the, the other end of it, it just shows in the last couple of years, like I know Trim only lost one game this year, but it was after they had it won. Uh, it was the same with us with Harps last year. We only lost one game the year before with the well. The well only, I don't think the well even lost the game the year before. It just shows the standard you have to be at to win the Premier League uh, these days. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely gone up to a high standard and. and it's definitely improving a year on year out. Um, that's fourth and second in the Premier Division. Um, division one, um, a bit, that was a fairly competitive divi- division this year uh, with Carrick Rovers under the leadership of David McSherry. Um, they won the, the division, and that was near enough on the last game of the season. I think it was or second last game of the season, and uh, Owen P eventually under the stewardship of David Doyle and Shane Cavanagh and the likes of uh, Jerry Lynch. There, they they pipped. Bay uh, FC to second place, and you know that was a fantastic co- competition in Division One. Yeah, I think the three of them were in the running all year. Um, I was able to get out to a few of the games, and I seen um, the, the, those three teams on, on a number of occasions this year. Um, a little bit surprised at the way it was going. I honestly thought Bay were going to take it, but they seemed to just drop off in the last couple of games. Um, whether had that been with uh, player availability or not, like you know, but um, they still managed to get up in the end. And um, I've, I've seen Dave come from Division Four, so uh, I'm delighted with Damien and the boys. They've done it the right way. They've come up through all the divisions and a uh, great bunch of lads. Same with Doyle, Doyle, and no one P back in in the Premier League. Like I know when they got relegated the, the year before, it's. It was a goal different, I think, or, or something like that, you know. So, um, and then Carrick bounced it straight back up as well, like you know. Carrick have a good squad there, like you know. It just maybe a little bit when they got relegated the year before, maybe just a little bit of experience. But um, they were stronger this year. I've seen them a number of times this year, and um, yeah, they were well worth a win in that in that division. Yeah, and you said yourself, it was a tough. It was a tough division, and it was tough to call from the tree that even went into the last two games of the season. It was, yeah, it, could, it, it literally could have gone anyway. When you speak about Bay FC, I mean, Bay FC finished third, and that was a playoff position, and they had to play tough from bottom in Premier Division, which was Square United. And Premier Division team do get home advantage. Bay went and played Square Ham um, one two nil. Uh, you know, uh, I know there was big celebrations for Damien and his squad there after that night, and and unlucky for Square, who, you know, they gathered a lot of players halfway through the season. Um, unfortunately, they got a good run, but. Uh, it wasn't to be to stay up there, but if they can keep them players, they'll definitely bounce back up. In, in my opinion, I've seen them play this year, and they were very, very well organised. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think even like with the relegation from the, the Premier League uh, for Square, I, I thought like as I just said with O one P, they were kind of unlucky that clubs around them kind of got them results went their way for clubs around them. Say. Um, in the in the run in when Square was starting to get one or two results and um, the likes of um, Rock Celtic in the last game of the season against Park Villa that was a great result going, going to Park Villa and winning you know it's a, it, it, that could have went either way either could have been Rock you know, it could have been either Delete even though Delete had a good start to the season they kind of fell away a little bit but um, Delete have uh, good quality in the squad there as well like you know it's a good class there so um, yeah, that could have went either way, you know, like you know, with the with the relegation. But uh, with they playing square, um, I would have loved to get. And I, I wasn't available to go to that game that day, but um, it was a little bit fearful for they with the, the, the way they would lost the previous two. And I just thought they were maybe struggling for players or something. This, so I I, I kind of had square down for favourites for that, you know. But um, it, it just goes to show you just don't know on the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we'll move on to Division Two, and that was, I think, that was one months before the end of the season. I think Cork Celtic just started from the, st- they picked up win after win after win, and every other team in that division just seemed to be beating each other, and they allowed Cork just to build up the momentum and and gather that amount of points that, on the free gene and player, um, you know, play, player manager, um, with Cormac Reid, they just seemed to just, I think, I think they were ten points ahead at one stage and. Uh, they were always going to win it. I think it was always a, a, about second place in that division. And that went to Atboy Celtic under the new management of Anthony Cavanagh, who, of course, did take over Oldcastle during the summer um, for about a month and wasn't to be and, and went back to Atboy where he's living. And he's done a fantastic job there. So, I mean, like, 
two teams that will really be back in the mix in Division 1, especially with a boy having previous experience and court court are just they're fantastic football inside and uh, I've seen them a few times this year and they just love to play football. Yeah, like yourself, I was lucky enough like it caught it one of my old clubs and um, I played with the boys. Um, I played ball with the boys with, with Rito and, and Figs and stuff. So I'm delighted for them. Um, they had the boys playing really, really good football and it's great to watch, you know. And um, you talk about summer football, I think they had that league one before the summer, but then, you know, it was, it was over fairly quickly, you know, that, and it was all, as you say, it was all about second place. A boy, um, like I, I think they took a step back this year to like take a step back this year to go forward again, like you know, and um, I think that was a great decision. And they were competitive this year rather than maybe fighting to lose a battle in Division One. They, they, they got guys in and, and were competitive. I think that it's great, like you know, it, get, it builds up a bit of momentum again in the club. And, uh, so, um, no, with the football call played in the season they have, and uh, they just recently beaten in the, the Challenge Cup semi final, like you know, it's. Uh, the football they play and it's a young team and it's um, they seem to have a good bond there and I, I think they'll do very well this year in Division 1 Oh definitely definitely and and of course every club is going to add add extra quality into that team so it's going to be make, making for a very competitive top 2 divisions uh, as we see um, Division 3 that's not actually finished just yet um, of course it was split into a Division 3A and a 3B um, with the top place teams going into a f- from each division going into the final and that of course is a uh, trim Celtic seconds against Boynharp seconds um, I know it's been agreed by the North East Football League that the runners up in each of them divis- divisions just get promoted which is Glenmore United and in 3A it's still not you know decided it's Bohemian Celtic under Jason Hanney or Kel Celtic under Mark Butler Kel still have points and, and games to play they can they can still take second place and you know, game automatic promotion. But how would you see Brian Harps and uh, Trim Celtic match going? Uh, given it's your, it's your own club, I know it's, <laughs> I know it's going to be a tight game, and they've already played a couple of big games this year against each other. Can you see? Uh, can you see this going to penalties? Well, I know that the semi final they played a couple of weeks ago. I was at that and recorded that one, and um, um, it was a great game of football. It really was a great game of football. Um, and some some great goals scored, and you know it was at one stage like half side of the bell and then Trim kind of took over. If you, if you want, went three one up, and then half spent our second gear, and it, like it could have went either way. I honestly thought it was going to be a winner before penalties, but like um, it'd be a tough one to call that, you know. Um, I know if the heart says by and halves, like you know, but uh, as I would like being being on my club, but um, it'd be a tough one to call, but. Uh, I, I think it'd be a, br- a great game of football, and I think anyone that's that's around should go down and see it. Like you know, it's it's not like um, old reserve football. It's two proper teams going at it, you know. And I think um, it's it's on in the MDL, if I'm not mistaken. I think anyone that's around should go and see that. Like you know, it's be well worth to watch. Yeah, well, when you look at Trim Celtic seconds this year, they've certainly um, been one of the star teams um, under Re- Robbie Westwell and Jimmy Highland and Gavin Mean, but. They're against a man that's known for winning reserve titles and cups in in the North East football. Danny Doyle, like Danny Doyle, wins probably a reserve trophy one year. He's probably the most successful reserve manager in the history of the North East football league. So it'll probably come down to mind games and what players are available and how you go about doing your job on the actual day. I mean, that's it's an actual final, so he'd be well used to that. Yeah, like I mean, you say what players are available on the day, and it's. Like all testament to Danny, like he's, I, I'm, I don't think he's had. It's probably the same with Trim. I don't think he's had the same team twice. You know, it's, uh, it's it, as I say, it, with war commitments and and guys not available and stuff. It's 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 hard to feel a reserve team. Like, but he's results week after week. Like you know, the same with Trim. Like you know, the two most consistent teams in in, the, in them groups in that division. Like you know, it's um, the 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 well worth it the positions at the top of the groups like you know and it's going to make as I said before it's going to make a great playoff game it's going to be a great game of football I think um, but like Danny what well, he hasn't won in reserve football it's, it's not worth talking about I don't think like you know he's he's missed consistent I think when you take on Danny Doyle you're, you're nearly guaranteed to win something you know yeah um, can we can we pinch you for what, who you think might, might, might 
Pepe? Um, well, the fact that I have a big trip away to Carlo on Sunday with the boys, I'm going to say boy naps. <laughs> <laughs> That's no bad on that thrown out the window if I say otherwise. Yeah, no, yeah. look, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, I think that everyone knows. I think the, the boys in trim and the boys in halves know it's going to be a tough game. Like, you know, so as I said before, it's well worth to watch and I, I'll definitely probably be over, I'll definitely be over it myself and, um, um, looking forward to that one actually, like, you know, so, um, but, uh, just half of they found themselves behind a lot, and they, they just never give up. Like you know, they've come from behind so many times this year, and and snatch wins. I think they were three 0 down with fifteen twenty minutes to go, and, and won the reserve games, and and they won't end up winning five three. Like you know, so they've done it more than once this year. So I wouldn't rule them out. You know. Yeah, and um, we'll push on to the, the final division in, in the Northeast Football League is Division Four, and that that of course was split into Four A and Four B. Carrick Rovers. Uh, seconds were um, top of the pile in that under Shane O'Rourke but uh, Lord Celtic uh, top of the pile in 4B under Paul O'Brien and uh, that was already played with Lord Celtic winning that match 1-0 uh, goal from Nibosi uh, Josic um, Lord Celtic have really changed their ways under Paul O'Brien this year and have, have really set about setting a standard for themselves and they really were proven winners on, on the actual night uh, winning 1-0 yeah, look, I'm delighted. Lord, it's Lord Sports bit of silverware, like you know, and um, delighted for the boys uh, there, like you know, it's especially the boys behind the scene. I know they've uh, struggled to keep it going over the years and stuff like that, you know, and um, they've they, they, they've kept the club together over taking and time. I know they did brief shot, uh, brief spell out of it, but delighted for Paul and the boys in there that that, that they've especially the background boys, like you know, how they kept it together and kept the club together, you know, and then. With Carrick, you know, I was at that game as well in South and um, it was a it was a very very tight game. You know, it was a little bit nervous at the start and stuff like you know. But uh, it's great to see Carrick there. Carrick, the first team getting promoted back to the Premier, and that you know that Carrick had been a big club all through the years in the North East Football League, and uh, it's great to see them back and both teams doing well again. Like you know, it's it's just showing like there's probably a little bit uh, resurgence up in the area, so it, it's it's shown on the football pitch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, ju- ju- just to mention the Kings Court Harps and Court Celtic both finished runners up in them and probably will ultimately get promoted as well. And you know, Tony Farley and Ben Sheenan were at Kings Court Harps t- running the, the ship there, w- while Michael O'Rourke at Court Celtic seconds. I mean, Court, as we said, have had a fantastic season. So, uh, all well for all them clubs going up, and uh, it's definitely going to make a more competitive season next year um, in the North East Football League. Tommy, we'll move on to the finals. Um, because I know we're going to be pushed for time here. Uh, well, Tully Bookmakers final, Ken Sound Rovers under um, Steve Lav and, and Noel Walsh there. Legend Steve Lav, you should say. Yeah. yeah, well, look, I know he's a founder member of, of Fairy FM, um, a little page we ran many years ago. He liked me mentioning that, but uh, they've got the Ken Sound Rovers into the final, a, a tough win against Court Celtic. Uh, no. No one likes to see someone lose on penalties, but I was at that. I covered that myself. It was actually a, a great game, end to end, three all. Um, the leader played Trim Celtic or Park Phil in that final. Alan Murphy, of course, we we spoke about what he's done at Trim Celtic and Derek Coogan at Park Phil with Mervyn Ennis. They've they've got they've got history. They know that they know the competition. They've done it time and time again. How would you see that one going um, with Trim and Park Phil this Sunday? Well, I, I kind of look as you said yourself with. Um with Derek and Melvin and stuff like they but they won it all like with, with the old Cosmos team and stuff and a few of our ex players with Trim. You, you have to say Trim will be favourites going into it, but you wouldn't write off Park Villa like not for not for a second. There's some some really good players there, you know, it looks at uh, Jack Murray and B Fabi and stuff like, you know, really good players there, like, you know, and they they'd be up for a challenge all right. So it's fine, like if I wasn't away in that game I definitely would be over to watching that one there. This week, the other one, like you, uh, as you said yourself, you covered that game and it was great. You told me you were over the camera. I can go and watch a game and not have to worry about recording it. Yeah, uh, it was a good game to watch. You know, it's um, again some great goals scored. Um, Cork seemed a little, it wasn't really. They didn't really play to the strengths I thought on the day. They were kind of, you know, but but saying that, like Kings Court, uh, oh, sorry, not Kings Court. Um, Kingston had a game plan and I think he executed. it really well like you know even with a man then they stuck in there and um, yeah I thought he executed really well and 
I hope to enjoy like the, the final when it comes around. You and know. they're and they're celebrating. They come around too often yeah. these finals. And they're celebrating the fortieth year anniversary as well. And as you, as you said, you got to watch the game. It's probably very rare yourself and myself is able to actually go and watch a game without having a camera in our hand. So uh, yeah, <laughs> you got to enjoy yeah, it that like day. If you go to a game, I'd bring a camera in case I miss something. You know, it's yeah, I'm in that mindset now. But it was great when you said you were going to do that. So it's great. I'd just be able to go and watch the game. You know, and it was. It was really great to stand there and watch it, even though it went to extra time in the cold and the wet. Like, but um, it was a great game to watch and some some great goals scored. And um, like I say, like uh, fair play to Kenstown, my local club out here. Like you know, so um, I, I delight. Like I get to watch them out in the final themselves. You know. Yeah, and um, we'll move on to the Commission Shield final, and we know who the two finalists are in that. Uh, Brian Harps, of course, your t- your club, Darius Kearns took over the management and is is doing a great job there with yourself etc and you've you know Blogan United B Park fill it there uh, went all the way to penalties Danny O'Connor of course getting a late equaliser to bring it to all and then Park Garm well experienced player for Blogan and saving the first three penalties and he won the penalty shootout 3-0 I mean that's going to be a tough game for you and Blogan are well used to finals oh yeah <coughs> I don't, there's hardly a year go by to put Blogan out in the final of some sort like you know they have great great cup experience um, I was, it was when I heard the result there I was kind of a little bit shocked because um, the Logan I know have kind of finished for the last few weeks like you know and haven't been whereas Park Hill have been playing competitive games um, so it was a little bit of a shock to hear that you know um, I, I honestly thought Park Hill might go over just but the fact that they've been playing competitive games might just have a little bit of the edge but as I said like I mean you, you just never ruled the Logan out in the cup match you know, yeah. so uh, look, yeah, looking forward to looking forward to the final. Um, we've had two great games with them this year over the season, and um, yeah, um, they, they've, they've done really well this year. I mean, finished third, and um, yeah, done really well with a young squad of players. So looking forward to that, you know. Yeah, yeah, we go on to the Fisimus Cup final, of course. There, uh, we know Owen P and I are, are waiting in the final. We mentioned Dave and and, and Shane and Jerry there, and um, but the other semi final is Kings Court Harps under Shane McKeown and Ben Sheen and against uh, you know your old club Court Celtic for Jane Comic Great. I mean, that's going to be a fantastic match between the two of them. Kings Court are well used to playing in cups, and we know that they have a, a, a buzz and a spirit around that club that just is unbelievable. And they're playing another good football inside Court Celtic. I mean, who who can you see making the final to play against OMP? Kings Court or Court? It's, it's hard to call that one. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It's very hard to call. As I just said earlier, with Court Celtic uh, in the semi final of the Cullies, I just thought on the day they didn't play to their strengths. Um, I thought they tried to probably uh, rush it and try to get the ball over the top too quickly. Whereas all year, like you've seen them playing on the deck and, and playing through teams, you know, it's. Um, I haven't seen much of Kingsville Harps this year, but like then again, Kingsville Harps have a, have a good pedigree in cup competitions as well uh, mm. down through the years. It'd be a tough one to call, like you know. And, um, I'm going to go all out and, and, and back card to, to win that one. And, um, if, if it is a card, no MP final or even Kingsville Harps final, like you know, it's it'd be a, it'd be a good battle, like, you know. Yeah, um, we'll go on to our uh, O'Neill Shield final. Um, Park Phil is second under Jonathan Toy he, he's done a great job there uh, I covered them last year and, and I've watched a game this year and then uh, we've mentioned Point Harp second Stanley Doyle so Park Phil is second Point Harp second who, who, where would you see that trophy going now? Point Harp don't you know <laughs> <laughs> that tattoo must be wearing off uh, of your shoulder yeah. there now Point Harp is that? <laughs> well they gave you a big coat so I have to say that you know so <laughs> yeah no, no, it, um, like that. I'll be at that game myself, and um, it's another one to look forward to. Like you know, there's, there's, there's no bad games coming up with the with the fixtures that are left in the in the season. So, um, no, it'll be a tough game again. It'll be a tough game. Um, and uh, as I say, looking forward to the MDL Astro. So, uh, point half have had a couple of games over there recently. Um, Park Villa know the way around that pitch as well. So, um, look, it'll be a, it'll be a good game. We had one to call, like you know, but. Um, I still say Boyd Harps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the semi final stage of the Reserve Cup final, uh, as I said, Danny Darrell is in that one as well. Boyd Harps seconds, uh, or Bohemian Celtic seconds under Dylan Brown and Paul Kelly. Um, the winner of that will play uh, De Leek or Trim Celtic seconds. I mean, De Leek, they've had a bit of a resurgence over the last couple of months under uh, Colin Waters, Brendan McKeown, and, and Shane Campbell, and they're really pushing it. Um, 
two semi-finals they could possibly be pinch one of them cups they could be a dark horse and all that I wouldn't really call them a dark horse because Trenton, oh, sorry the league seconds have been consistent for the last three four seasons now like you know they've, they've won the Premier Reserve they've been up there like you know battling for it when they haven't won it so they've always been there thereabouts like you know and Boys have done a great job there with a young with a young squad, and I know they're trying to push a few of them through to, to the first team now. But um, no, I wouldn't call it the league a dark horse at all. Um, the boys have done a great job over there, and I always have them up there thereabouts. I think even this year they were going great, and they had a little blip, whether that being with play, player availability, I'm not sure. They just had a little blip that ruined them out of the league. But other than that, they still had a good season, you know, and they're still involved in the Leicester Junior Shield and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, again, again, it's another. It's, it'd be another good final when it comes around because there are quality teams that are left in it. Yeah, and of course we're into our last final, Jay Riley Cup final, and of course we know that's Abbey Celtic um, under Brian O'Reilly and Stephen Smith against the league or Bohemian Celtic. Jason Handy's first team. Um, you know, that's going to be a tough one. Abbey Celtic, you know, they were. W- Good club a couple of years ago, and and they went missing for a few years, and now they're back, and they're back with a bang, and to be in the final, you know, that's great for for Abby and and the boys over there. Yeah, I think people forget that Abby came up through all the divisions a couple of seasons ago, and and even when they made the Premier League, they were leading it for the first seven eight games unbeaten. And I think they won a bit. I think one nil for the first seven games, and and then I, I think something. Behind the scenes, there wasn't enough. I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure in detail, so I probably won't say anything. But um, I just think whether they hadn't the support or what they decided to take step step back. And like, look, clubs do that, and, and, and it benefits them sometimes. Like rather than trying to just put a team out and, and not be competitive and stuff, but they come back and um, they've been competitive this year. And, and making a final in the first season back is is uh, a great achievement for them. Like you know, and then they, they they've done well in the league campaign as well. Yeah, 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 and and it's definitely going to be uh, another another war and context in that competition. I'm going to push it on real quick because I know we're really running out of time here. Um, Trim Celtic, as we we mentioned, you know, flying in in the Tully Cup, flying in the, in the already won the league. They're in the FEI Junior Cup this Sunday. Uh, oh no, following Thursday, Thursday the 28th of November against um, Led Senior League side Transport FC. That's on in the MDL grounds. The winner of that will play at home to Avenue United. That'll be a tough one for Trim Celtic, but they should be favourites given that our season has been full flow. Uh, yeah, I expect. I, I honestly expect them to be Transport. I've come up against Transport um, before as a player when I was with uh, Boyne Rovers, like you know, and I think that they're in Boyne Rovers uh, division last season as well. Boyne Rovers beat them as well. So look, I, I've come up against Transport a few times, and um, I expect Trim halves. Oh, Trim, oh, Trim Celtic, sorry. To, um, that's it. That's that's that tattoo out. coming out again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's running off in the, in the wash, you know. But um, no, look, it's um, I expect them to win that game, you know. But um, the way they're set up, they, they prepare really well at Trim, and they've had a good uh, run at home I don't as think well. I've seen them play a bad game this year at all, Trim. So um, to, with the home advantage and the all weather and that as well, like, you know. So I expect them to win that, like you know. But, but um, you know, once once they're at it, they should be they should win that one. Yeah, and and they're also in the Leinster Junior Cup to um, another home tie against Killing Manna from the Leinster Senior League, and that's scheduled for you know Sunday to de- December eight. Unless, of course, Trim Celtic beat Park fill out on Sunday, and that will be the Challenge Cup final weekend. So that will be rescheduled in the Leinster Junior Cup. Look, at this this the joys of being a successful team, and I think this is what you want, as, especially as a player and, and as a manager going into them. You know you. You want to be involved in all these big games at the end of the season. I think um, it's 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 the joys of being involved in a, in, in a good team, good successful team. Is all you, at the end of the season, you big games look forward to instead of just seeing the season out. And um, like I mean, to, for, for a club from the North East Football League to go far, it'd be great to see it go far and then less the Junior Cup or, or, or whatever. Like you know, so um, in all these national competitions, it'd be great to see a uh, club from our league really push her and I'd love to see one of them reach a final even you know so could happen with Trim the way they're set up I said like, I, as I said I, I haven't seen I've seen them a few times but I, I haven't seen them on a bad day yet you know so um, um, look hopefully and do really well in this competition yeah um, and then 
last the last game we'll t talk about was the Leinster Junior Shield round three match uh, this Saturday um, the league seconds against Castle Lock Celtics that's on in the Diffie Astro the league will definitely be favourites in that one with home advantage in Drada yeah look as I said earlier about the league that you know it's um Really good set up there with the, with the boys in charge and, and the team and um, as I said they've been challenging for the cups for the last three three four seasons so uh, I really hope they do well in it you know and, and it keeps the season going. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Look, we'll, we'll just finish off with this last bit. Um, I know, I know, I know. Been previously involved. I'm just, just sorry, just to interrupt you there, like, but what it did. Ourselves going house and we're in the Leinster Senior Cup now as well. This, we, um, this Sunday, is that? Yeah, we're we'll waiting against new old boys. So, um, you know, we, our season's kind of been over waiting for the finals. So, we haven't had games in the last few weeks. So, um, look, it's, it's, great to see, like, um, it's great to see all our clubs still being in competitions at, at this stage. Like, you know, I think it's a, a really good for the league and, and the teams and the clubs and. and People involved in each other that were still involved in national competitions, you know. Yeah. Um, last thing to talk about is uh, a lot of clubs are, are we're talking about club of the year who, and who who we thought would stand out for club of the year so far. I mean, for me, there's a couple of standout performers this year. Obviously, Trim Celtic Premier Division champions, first and second, doing well. Park Villa, believe it or not, first and second, doing well. Buying Harps, first and second, doing well. Court Celtic, first and seconds. But the criteria for winning the club of the year in many leagues it's always been that you know clubs have to have their own facilities have to have um, you know you know showers they have to have like they basically have to have their own grounds and stuff like that and I, th I think it's time for the North East Football League definitely this year they should be reintroduced now it should have been a couple of years ago maybe a team of the year for teams that are probably the best team on the pitch overall in the entire season and they just don't qualify for a club of the year based on that you know, should this be a thing going forward with the North East? Yeah, look, I think uh, I've been on the committee and uh, been involved in some discussions like one like when, when we are talking about club of the year and, and stuff, you know, and it's, it doesn't always go to the to the club who've done well on the field. You know, so it's, um, you know, we a couple of years ago with the, with the well, with the first team winning, the, the unbeaten, the second team doing a double and stuff, but, you know, it's, it, it may be, might might be better off say as a, as a league putting out the criteria you're looking for for um, for club of the year. Whereas team of the league is kind of straightforward in regards to you, you'd have maybe three, four, five at tops teams to be looking at for, for for team of the year. You know, and if the, if, it, if it's what it's done on the pitch, you know, it, there's no there's no grey area in regards. To, oh well, you don't have your own pitch, you don't have an underage set up or, or anything like that. You know, it's. You know, if if you put it through criteria, I suppose you could you could judge on who's going to be the club of the year. But um, I think it's a good call to go for team of the league and and, and what team in the season and, and what's been done on the pitch. You know, because I think that's what a lot of people kind of judge judge it on. Like at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people wouldn't know what goes on behind behind the scenes in a, in a lot of clubs, whereas they know what's happening on the pitch with the results and stuff and being there every week. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, Tommy, I've I've kept you on the uh, on the phone for a long time here now, so uh, I definitely catch up with you over a couple of these finals, etc. And I, I just want to say thanks very much for coming on, and you're doing a fantastic job at the North East Football League with the website and with with the page and and with all the promotion and the video highlights you do. It's 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 been good to watch, and uh, well done. And our third and final guest on tonight's show is Des Smith. Des Smith is the PRO for the Athletic Union League. In Dublin. Yeah, welcome, Des. Hey, Justin, how are you? Are you alright? I'm very good. Uh, just catching up with you now, and all things good at the AUL, I hear. Yeah, yeah, go well, go well so far this season. Uh, looking forward to the end of it, Celtics. A long old season, but yeah, things are good. Um, uh, over the last couple of years, you, you you seem to be adding a lot of youth to the committee. I, I noticed. Um, uh, yeah, that was something that we, we identified uh, over the last couple of seasons. Just some of the lads aren't getting any younger. So, uh, yeah, we've been brought on a few new lads, which has been great for the league. They're, they're enthusiastic, you know, uh, you know, something that we needed. Um, so, yeah, that was good lads, and they're all football men, uh, which is good. 
Yeah, I saw uh, Terry Corley. Terry played in the league for years for a good few teams. Uh, uh, play, you know, was a, won the Oscar trainer and former junior international uh, and former futsal international. Uh, so he, he's been a, a welcome addition as well as David Doyle, who was uh, secretary of uh, Sally Park United. Right? So he's well known uh, within the league and David's good lad, really enthusiastic. Um, Recently, we have uh, Tony Hatton as well uh, come up for the. Uh, Tony, again, was with, part of their Oscar Trader team. He was their goalkeeping coach. He was part of Sheriff uh, YC in the last few years. He's their goalkeeping coach. Uh, good lad. Uh, for, again, really looking forward to getting stuck in, and hopefully, he's going to be involved in the futsal end of things. Yeah. I, I... Um, also, we, again, we have Darren Fane and Peter Lynch, another young two young men who are now they're, they're in their second season with us now and yeah they're loving it so far they're getting stuck in great lads to have like, I can't believe you're comparing Darren and Peter as two young men together when there's a good, good age gap Darren, between the two of them Darren's only in his early 40s or whatever I think he is anyway and Peter it would be early 40s so they're young men to me but that <laughs> way yeah plenty of experience I know, I know Peter would be the He'd be a, a good man for getting things done, and and he, in, in the best way of putting it, he'd take no shit either. Yeah, no, he doesn't pull any punches, Peter. He's he's outright. He's you know, he, 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 if he sees something that he doesn't like, he, he speaks his mind, and which is which is great to see. And he's looking after the the Fiber Star, uh, the Premier Sunday Division. Um, yeah, he's good. He's really good to have, and he's recently been uh, put on to the FEO Junior Council as well. So he'll be a voice there. And believe me, he he likes to hear his own voice, but he's good. He's <laughs> yeah, good. I know that. I know that. And you've just mentioned one of your uh, sponsors there, Viber Star, who's just they've, yeah. they've come in. Over the last couple of seasons, and I've uh, done wonders, which is and taking it yeah, all. But yeah. and of course, Fiber Star is um, um, owned by Brian Egan, and and he, he, he very good footballer back in his day. And um, I, I remember recording him playing, scoring a cracker of a goal against for the Irish Legends in in a charity match. Um, so we, yeah, he could possibly still do a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, no, he's been cover board. He's been great. Uh, they 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 done the top division last year. They're doing it again uh, this year. They, the Premier Division, um, yeah, no, and they do a shield as well. Brian and the whole a lot of the staff have been excellent to us, you know. So and and they, you know, they do special rates for AUL clubs as well. If they're if they're looking to get a new phone or anything, a tablet, you know, they do special rates for AUL clubs. It's brilliant. So mm. yeah, fair play to lost without them. Yeah, and 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 of course you have uh, O'Driscoll O'Neill insurance on board yeah. this year, I see. Yeah. They've come aboard this year, Jessica O'Neill, you know, they, they've done a fantastic package, uh, George back for for all the clubs, uh, which have, they voted in at our AGM to uh, go and the, the George package, so all players that play in the AUL are now covered by, they'll have their own personal insurance with the uh, Jessica O'Neill, so, uh, which as well as their public liability, which is brilliant, so, yeah, it's, it's great, it's, it's the way football has gone, Got to have uh, insurance these days, and, and we're delighted to. Or just going to Neil came on board with a sponsorship, and and also this package for the clubs. Yeah, so, yeah. Good, yeah. Good. And you, you, all your long term sponsors are still involved: Superior Rack and Umbro RPD, Keep yeah. Brown, and uh, even even your select fields caring that's out there and the venue you have for ambulance yeah. looking to yeah. rent the facilities there. That's right. Yeah, look, well, Umbro are still on board. Uh, Superior Rack and with Dick. It's been absolutely brilliant to the league. You know, former secretary now kit man at the Irish team, but Dick still uh, pumps his money in. Anything we need, we just ring up Dick, and it's there's no problem there. And, uh, yeah, select foods. It, it, uh, they have the restaurant bar in the complex, and they're really good to us as well. And again, if anybody is looking to hold christenings, weddings, whatever it is they want. It, it's all available if they just make a call to the complex and leave a look after and get their price and, and uh, we can we can arrange that for you yeah no problem at all yeah that that's that's good to hear um uh, one thing that i was homing in and watching a lot is uh you know all the teams that compete in the FEI Junior Cups, the Leinster Junior Cups, Leinster Junior yeah. Shields. Um, you still have some um, some teams involved in these competitions in the FEI Junior Cup. I I think you still have Dublin Celtic are playing Rush Athletic. I think is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
That's right. And uh, yeah, the Dublin uh, 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 Celtic against uh, Russia. Lads. That's them for December the fourth. Uh, so that'll be a good game. I think they're the, what we have left in it. Um, um, we we got tough draws. A lot of the teams did in the, the early rounds. Uh, and say with the the LFA uh, junior, we we had Usher and Sheriff and St. Peter's and Freebooters all in the against their clubs in the fourth round. So it was tough, but you know it's great nearly experience. You still have two teams left in the Leicester Junior, I see. But yeah, we do, we do. We have we have uh, Eloy Woodlawn and Buttercross. So yeah, we still have teams still there, still still fighting away. And in in the Shield, we you know the last sixteen, we have six of the teams still still there uh, fighting there. So like it's in SCV, FC, Valley Park. Mr. Mullen, Lusk, Sword Celtic, and, and Screen Tara, who who are having a fantastic season this season. Man. Yeah. Excellent to watch. And uh, they've they've actually won the last two rounds. I think away in Wexford, if I, uh, if I remember. They have. They be. I think they be uh, Wexford Bowes and Duncanon in their last two. Down in down in Wexford. So it's yeah, brilliant. It's a tough place to go and get uh, get a result. And they've got two in the last two games. So yeah, and they've got a home. Thank God they've got a home draw in the in the, in the last sixteen. Yeah, that's brilliant to hear. Um, um, speaking of your Premier Sunday uh, division, mm. that's a real tight division this year. Now with Valley Park leading the way in hundred percent, fifteen points, but Clontarf, Fraheny, Dublin Celtic, and even Darndale, who um, you know they're really chasing in 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 that pack at the moment, and it could go anyway. It really could. Like, a couple of weeks ago, I would have said Darndale and looking. Favourites for it. Now they're in fifth place. Uh, a couple of defeats have, have hurt them. Uh, Fally Park have won 5 out of 5. Clutch uh, Harf are steadily, steadily climbing up the division. Rahini, Dublin Celtic are an excellent team. They've, they're centre forward. Peter, he's the lead goal scorer in the, in the, uh, in the Sunday Premier. So, yeah, no, there's, there's, I think there's only three points separating fifth to fourth. So yeah, yeah. got to go down to the wire that one. Yeah, and and uh, in the the Division Three Sunday, um, one of the clubs as we mentioned there, Screen Tower. There's there's the second place um, at the moment, joint at the same points with Clontarf FC. But Begs yeah. AFC are, are leading the way, four points ahead of everybody else at the moment. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Begs they've they've played seven, won six, and drew one. Yeah, so they're flying and delighted to see Begs are back in the AUL. Uh, you know, and, and the facilities they have are second to none. And stand the lights, you know, and, and John, John Clark there is doing a fantastic job with the good course, lads. Of course, former Cabra Cabra um, Celtic. Oh, sorry, former Cabra Celtic. Yeah, Johnny went in there, you know, to help Begs for him and uh, uh, both, you know, uh, the old Cabra Celtic and the Begs for now are, are thriving. So mm. it's good to see. Yeah, and if anybody's looking for any meat there, he, he does run a butchers and cabra too. <laughs> he does, he does, and he look after you, Johnny. No problem at all. Yeah, um, Division Three Saturday. Um, this is a, a joint division with yourselves and Lancer Football League, and Galti right. uh, are, are leading ahead against Borough Cross at the moment, and Phoenix and SCV. Yeah, yeah. Now that is going to be another tight division. Galti are very good. They come over from the LFL. Um, we thought it's a joint uh, venture we're doing, which is great to see. Um, but the Galti are, are, are excellent team. They play Friday nights as well. Uh, they'll be it seems to be but uh, Phoenix and Buttercross. Uh, I think you don't count off Broombridge and Letting. They, they'll they'll have a run as well. As saying this, it's, it's a good division. Old County, all good teams. Yeah. There's there's no one getting a hammer in it. They're all been fairly close, two one, three twos type of thing. So yeah, they're they're it's a, it's a good division, it really is. And um, three A Saturday is another tight. Is there every division I'm looking at seems to be a tight division. You see, Kings with Castle yeah. are leading the way, but you know you're talking just three points between them and fifth place. Um, Angel, El Mount, Saint Dieters, and Crinian Crinian Strand. Yeah, yeah, Crinian Strand. They're they're down at what fourth fifth. They're unbeaten. They're they're having a super season. It's it, it's their fourth season in football and plenty of games in hand. Sheriff Saturday players and East East Wall best for uh, Saturday you know, Saturday players. So yeah, and, and uh, keep me in there as assistant manager. You know he was with he, he was East Wall manager last year. So they've got a lot of experience. Good good players there. And they, they'll be there thereabouts. Age are excellent team. Young lads excellent to look at and I can't say enough about uh, Kings of Castle they're, they're brilliant uh, 
kind of hard. The, the manager walked out or left them for another club and took a lot of their players, but they bounced back brilliant. They really have a fantastic club on social media. The best you know around. Uh, yeah, they're, they're they're a great club to have in the league. Yeah, um, three B Saturday, uh, three teams, four teams in the mix there with Broomridge, you know, Rohini, Hot Press, and Morn. Yeah, yeah, no, again, Broomridge. Uh, I think they're unbeaten as well. Uh, they're a positive side of the league. Yeah, they're 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 and uh, Paul Henderson has them there. He's done a, he's done a great job. But they're all young lads, 18, 19, I think probably 20 is the oldest lad on it, but he, he's got them playing great stuff. And um, recently just got knocked out of the uh, Shield. They were devastated, you know. Um, but they're, they're a good old, good team there. And then the Hot Press are always there and thereabouts. Rahidi, another big club. Yeah, that's going to go down to the water as well. Um, but it's good to see Brewbridge uh, United back in the league. Yeah, and we'll just we'll home in on, on your last two divisions in the AOL as the probably one of the fastest grounds competitions get and you have you have a and you are running so well is uh, futsal and um, Blue Magic are, are leading the way again this year with Pushkas Haji and and Saint Dejas Futsal who have improved a, a, a hell of a lot since uh, since yeah. I was covering them a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. That's another t- toy division after Blue Magic. I think Blue Magic are running away at the moment. Uh, Blue Magic are, you know, they didn't play in the, in the UEFA for Champions League for nothing. They're they're an excellent team. You know, they really are. Um, as I said, the the other two pushes Hadji will 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 uh, push them all the way. Um, but you know, this this futsal started off with four teams a few years ago. Uh, now it's into two divisions, growing all the time. You know, this year we did, we have great to see Ballymun United having a team back in the AUL, and Dingle is still there. We have um, uh, Talker Rovers. You know, we have you know, League of Ireland and Bohemians representative. It's 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 good. It's it's grown and grown. It's definitely one of the fastest growing sports, and definitely the soccer and uh, uh, foot, futsal. It's great to see. Yeah, it's, but they, you know they. they Chances of playing in the UA for Champions League for, and that's what you get if you win there, the AUL division, the AUL Cup. You play against the universities, and every year so far, the the uh, AUL teams come through. And uh, last year, it was uh, Blue Magic who who went and played in the UA for Champions League in futsal, which was a great experience for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's something that we've always discussed in terms of. I think the format for the FEI Futsal Cup. Uh, allowing two universities into the semi-finals is just a joke for me personally having witnessed it and, and witnessed 18-1 results and 17-2 and stuff like that I think personally maybe the semi-finals of the university should be put into quarter-final stage with the, f- with the four top teams of the AOL and, and let them play one off each other and if any of them are good enough to progress into a semi well and good but I wouldn't see I'd be amazed if one of them made it through and I just think it's it's taken away from the actual competition being that you've two it becomes farcial when it gets to that stage in my opinion um, and I think they should, it's something they should re-look, re-look at you know well, it's, it's a bull boy pay grade of forge it's an FEOI decision but something you know we, we've talked to the FEOI before and they, 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 have, they have had a look at it but if they change change the form of it, I don't know. Yeah. Um, just l- lastly, we'll, we'll talk, uh, probably the first year, I can probably say in a, a long, 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 long time that uh, the AUL haven't entered an Oscar trainer's uh, side into, into the competition. And it, it's me tour yeah. interview this, this evening and, and three leagues that have always kind of put a team in, Monaghan Cavan League and uh, the North East Football League and now yourselves. <laughs> At this rate, you may as well run a competition between yourselves. Yeah, uh, maybe so. We're, 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 we listen. We we are having a representative team. It's just we're not putting it into the Oscar trade. We have our own reasons for that. You know, um, it's something I don't want to talk about now. But it's something that we didn't feel we got support on uh, when we needed. And uh, so we, we've done something different ourselves. I'm delighted to say that Paul Bukedi is going to run their representative side with a couple of other coaches here. His backroom staff is going to be very soon. But yeah, we've lined up a couple of friendlies uh, already and, you know, caps and stuff. So yeah, no, we, we, we'll always have a representative side in the AUL. And he's been out watching games already and having chats with people, other people. So look, it's maybe something you can talk to him in the next few weeks yourself. I will, and, indeed. Uh, you know, yeah, that'll be definitely. But look, we'll always have a representative side. 
Yeah. Yeah, you will. It's just unfortunate we weren't prepared to, to, to put into the Oscar trailer this year for our own reasons. Yeah. Um, uh, look, let them go, get on with the tour. We can look to whoever wins it. Yeah. We've had great days in the Oscar trailer trophy over the years. Really have. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, in, a, in my own opinion, it, it's, it's a, a great tournament, but it's, it's, it's been, it's, it, it could be a, a lot better. Needs new direction, uh, uh, probably. Um, just uh, lastly, I just want to home in on uh, you know uh, yeah. as a, a as a former peer row of a couple of leagues, and and I, I do yeah. a lot of I help a lot of people behind the scenes. The one thing I, I I've noticed that you've continued on would be the fact that you probably cover a hell of a lot more matches than a hell of a lot of leagues out there in terms of you you. you actively putting up team photos and action shots yeah. from all the games you are covering between your, your committee and you try yeah, to get no, out to uh, as many yeah it's something we've been doing uh, over the last few years and uh, I'd say credit yeah. to yourself but you are part of their uh, organisation it was something that you could have uh, input and got us doing we could have kept it on since you, you got your your other ways but uh, yeah we, we every tour did only we at our meeting the chairman would ask us what game we're going to cover the weekend. So if we're available, we'll always, one of us, are, you know, uh, three or four of us will go out and cover games. So we'd always get um, at least one or two on a Friday night, one on a Saturday, maybe two on a uh, Sunday. So at least five games a week, we would go out and cover, uh, take photographs, give the teams, their sponsors, exposure. Because it's, it's tough now with, with no, um, they're glad to see the Herald Striker back, but they don't, cover matches in the paper and such they yeah. do fixtures and, and results so so we, we're trying to give the clubs as much exposure their sponsors as, as much exposure as part of the referees uh, so yeah no, it's, we, we make sure we get out and do games it's all the, the it's great the committee lads do it themselves uh, you know, they'll go out and take the photographs send them on to me I will put them up on their Twitter and, and Facebook page but yeah it's it's uh, so look we hope to, our aim is to do five games a week brilliant uh, so yeah it's brilliant well, look, Des, thanks for coming on this evening and uh, no doubt we'll home in on you uh, as the season progresses and we'll talk to you very soon. So thanks very much for coming on, Des. And that's a wrap for our first ever show. If you have any hot topics you want to discuss, any news, transfers, get in touch and we'll talk about it. Maybe it's to do with the FEI Junior Cup, the Leinster Junior Cup, even the UEFA readings, any topic. I'll have no problem talking about it once it's all based on facts. Thank you again for listening.